The following procedure is performed by Dr. Amal Saxena in Palo Alto, California. The patient is placed supine. If needed, a bump can be placed underneath the ipsilateral hip. The incision markings are directly over the sinus tarsi slash tarsal canal region. The neurovascular structures are identified superiorly and inferiorly the sural nerve. I prefer to make the skin incision within the skin lines over the tarsal canal, and this is generally between one and two centimeters. The incision is deepened with blunt retraction. One can use a hemostat or a freer. And then the guide wire is inserted, and this should be placed from anterolateral to posterior medial. And if you're making an incision medially, you can go ahead and create that incision, allow the guide wire to exit medially. Otherwise, you can tent the skin and make a small stab incision over the guide wire in the medial aspect. And then people often like to stabilize this guide wire with a hemostat clamped onto it so that the guide wire does not piston through the tarsal canal. So once the guide wire has been established in the proper direction with the tarsal canal, it's a good idea to assess the subtalar range of motion and get an appreciation for how much extraneous eversion the patient has. We'll start sizing the implant by placing the actual sizers over the guide wire through the tarsal canal. It starts with the size 7, and if you see too much excursion with the size 7, you can certainly just start sizing up the next uh, size, which is 8. If you feel like you have a good reduction of the eversion, then you can certainly just stop. What I like to do is look at where the skin lines line up with the laser markings on the sizers. Generally, these markings line up with the skin between 2 and 3 centimeters. So that gives you a good idea for depth. And then again, you want to assess the subtalar eversion. And if you have too much eversion, then certainly go up with the size until you get a sufficient reduction of the eversion. Then you can image. When you take the intraoperative imaging, what you want to look for is the Taylor neck bisection. So get an appreciation for that because the leading edge of the implant or even the sizer should not go beyond this. Namely, the medial portion of the uh, implant should not go beyond the Taylor neck bisection. Then you can actually uh, remove the sizers when you've got the appropriate size that you think reduces the eversion or extraneous uh, pronation. Generally, the most common sizes are between 8 and 10. After you've placed the actual implant, certainly you can re-image and verify the placement. Again, two ways to do this are by looking for the Taylor neck bisection, making sure the implant is not medial to this, and assessing where the laser markings on the screwdriver line up with the skin. This is generally between 2 and 3 centimeters. Then you can remove the screwdriver. A helpful way of making sure the implant does not dislodge is keep the hind foot in eversion, or you can put an instrumentation on the actual implant itself just to help stabilize it, and then remove the screwdriver and subsequently the guide wire. And then I prefer to get final intraoperative views, again, verifying the placement in the tarsal canal, both in the lateral plane and in the AP plane, making sure the implant is to the tail and neck bisection but not medial. And skin is closed with two horizontal mattress sutures. And then if you're performing additional procedures, certainly these, those can be performed. Those would dictate the postoperative care. Otherwise, if just the pro-stop procedure is being performed, a patient is placed in a below knee cast boot, generally between two and four weeks. Sutures get removed at two weeks. Other Arthrex surgical solutions for posterior tibial tendon dysfunction include the Trimit screw system for calcaneal osteotomy, the Biotinodesis screw system for FDL tendon transfer, a variety of Arthrex suture anchors for PTT repair, and the LPS plate for cotton osteotomy. For information on the Arthrex surgical skills training program, contact Arthrex or visit the Arthrex website at www.arthrex.com.